Hey, good afternoon and welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly at Kaiser Slaughter and High School. We're talking about data distributions. Okay, a data distribution, well, let's just write it down. It's a graph showing how frequently data values occur. This is important because we want to know what's going to happen or we want to know how often something has happened. So there's two ways that we're going to look at it today. A dot plot, which is uh, used with data sets of about 20 or less, you know, maybe 15 to 20 to 25. Or if there's too much data and we have too many values, we use a histogram. We kind of group them together and they make these bar thing. Remember doing those histograms? There's bars. It tells you how much or it tells you a proportion of how much. Okay, so let's review how to do a dot plot. We have number of siblings here. All right, that tells us what it's about. And we see that above the zero, there are four dots. That means that four people have uh, zero siblings. How many here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight people have one sibling. All the way down, one person has four siblings. So if I wanted to, I could write all these numbers out. So you have to know how to do that. So first I would start with zero, and then I'd have another zero, and then another zero, and then another zero, and then I'd have a one, and then it'd just keep going. So in math, sometimes we use the ellipse, which means, you know, dot, dot, dot. It means I'm just going to keep going until what? Until we get a three, and then a three, and a three, and then a four is the very last one. So if I wanted to write it all out, that's what it would mean right there. Well, now that you know how to do that, Pause the video. I want you to find the mean number of siblings from the dot plot, and I want you to find the median number of siblings. Pause the video and go ahead and do it. Go. Okay, so here's what I found. If you add all the numbers together, you get 33. We're finding the mean. Remember how to find the mean? Add them all up and divide by the number of uh, data points. So when I add them all together, I get 33. And then I count the number of data points. I found there to be 22. So that equals 1.5 siblings. That is the mean number of siblings. But the median, well, when you count all these points up, we said there's 22. Right? So if there's 22, here we go, there's 22 things. Which one's in the middle? Well, trick question. There's no middle. You got 11 on this side, and then you got 11 on this side, right? So if you have 11 and 11, the 11th and the 12th, you add up and divide by 2, and that will tell you the median. So we need to find out which values are the 11th and the 12th. The way that I normally look through the dot plot is I just start counting up. That's how I do it. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. All right, so this one here, if you count them all up, that's the 12th one. And this one is the 11th one. Now look, that's important. When I add them together, it's going to be 1 plus 1 divided by 2. Now how close were we? By the way, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the, me the median number of siblings is one sibling. Let me circle that. That's how I like to circle things, draw our attention. All right, so back to this. How close were we from having a different median? Well, if we had to go one more, if this was the 11th, data point and then this would be the 12th one down here I'd have to add up 1 plus 2 and divide by 2 and I'd get the same answer as the mean but I don't get the same answer and the reason why is because this data has kind of a funny shape so let's talk about the different shapes of dis distributions here now this one is a regular distribution most of the time we call it a normal distribution or a bell curve because it kind of looks like a bell there I could ring that um, but what you notice is you have an equal number on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Most of it's in the middle, a few down here and a few over there. That's called a symmet Ooh, I wanted to erase. That's called a symmetric distribution. So we're going to write that out. If you remember in art class, symmetric means you have one half the same. It's a mirror image of the other side. So this graph over here, this is also another type of a symmetric distribution, but it's kind of funny because it has two different parts and there are two different high points. Now if you remember, we I'm going to talk about the mode. Actually, let me just tell you what this is. This is called bimodal. Then we'll talk about it. So bimodal. So bimodal means that you have two modes. Two modes. Now remember, the mode is you know a value that occurs the most. So by looking at this distribution, you can tell there are two areas that occur the most in this graph. So you're thinking, when, when would that ever happen? I mean, what kind of data looks like this? Well, suppose I work for Michelin, and I'm going around in my jobs to figure out how many tires people own. 
Well, people would own tires probably in groups of four because you buy tires in four, maybe two, but you know most of the time you buy tires in four. So you, you go to people's houses, you ask how many tires they have. They might have four, they might have eight, okay? But rarely would they have seven or six. More often, they get them in groups of four. So that's an example of some weird data. It is symmetrical because one side does mirror the other, but we would call that bimodal. It's a little more specific. But now we're going to move up to the two that are most important. We need to learn the names of these two. Now, suppose you have data that's spread out on one side, uh, and it's kind of clumped together at the other. Well, this is called skewed. If you spread out data, it's called skewed. And the direction you spread it out is the direction that it's skewed. So we would say this first graph is skewed left because it's pulled to the left. It's spread out towards the left. Now, what type of data would be skewed left? Um, just off the top of my head, maybe GPA? Is that skewed left? Because you have a whole bunch of people with 3.3s and 3.4s and 3.5s. You have a couple people with 4.0s. And then it goes down slowly uh, where you might have just a few people, maybe at a one point, huh, you know, just way down there, if you know what I mean. All right, so that might be an example of some skewed left data. Let's look at the other side. Now, as you guess, if this is skewed left, this would be skewed right. All right, so skewed right data is data that's spread out over the right. Now, examples of this. Ooh, let's see, how about the salary in a neighborhood? If you walked around and you asked people what their salaries or the household income was, you'd find out that most people are about average. By average, I mean median probably in this, and you'll see why in a second, but most people are going to be in here. And then occasionally you're going to get these people that are a little bit richer and a little bit richer, and then some people are going to be super rich. Now, going the other direction, how poor can you get? Well, you can only get so poor and then you're done, right? You make nothing, that's as poor as you can get. You can't get any poorer. So maybe household income would be a good example of skewed right data where it's spread out over to the right. All right, so what happens when we have skewed data? Well, let's look at the mean and the median. Now, if you remember, the mean, add them all up and divide, and the median is the value that's in the middle. So if you have a symmetric curve, that means you have an equal number of values on the left and the right-hand side of the median. That means that the mean, they kind of cancel each other. You get up right in the middle here. The mean will equal the median. This happens when you have a symmetric distribution. Now, can we remember the name? This is what? This is spread out a little more. It kind of pulled to the right there. So this is skewed to the right. So what do you think happens if it's skewed to the right? Well, think about it. Some of these values get higher and higher. They're kind of spread out more to the right. Let's. This one's more skewed. It's easier to see. So you have a couple people in your neighborhood, maybe millionaires, maybe billionaires. What does that do to the mean? Well, the mean, it's going to make it go up a little bit. If you have a couple millionaires or billionaires, it's going to make it go way up. What's going to happen to the median? Well, take a couple of these data points here and spread them out. The median's not going to change. The median is the, it's the values right in the middle. So if a couple are really high, it kind of stays put. Okay, so if it's skewed right, that means that the median, oh, I always like to think about it in terms of the mean. The mean is greater than the median. So the mean has gone to the right. What if it's skewed left or pulled to the left? Well, it's the same thing. You have a couple of values down here. The more they spread down the number line, the more it pulls the average down. The median doesn't change, so we would say the mean is less than the median here. All right, so for skewed data, it is always better to use the median rather than the mean. And the reason why is you can find the true middle of the data. Okay, so now I want you to think about what would this distribution look like? The age of death in a city. I know it's kind of morbid. All right, but we need to think about this. When people die in a, any city, really, but just think of a, an imaginary city, hypothetically. When people die, what age do they die at? Well, I think you'd find that very few people die young, and that's a good thing. But very few people die young, and then people start dying more once they get older. So as you notice, there's a whole clump of people that die up here. That's... It's mainly old people, a.k.a. Mr. Bean. All right, but they're kind of up here. Uh, very few people die young, so it's kind of spread out over here. So I would say this is skewed to the left. 
That's what I would say. Now, what about the other side there? The foot size of 30-year-old women. All right, so let's think about how this works out. Is there any reason to believe, now they're all 30 years old, so we're not including children in this. So is there any reason to believe that you would have, you know, the data spread out on one side more than the other? And I'm going to argue with no. I'm going to argue that should not be a straight line. I'm going to argue that most of the people are in the middle. You have a few people with tiny feet and a few people with large feet. And they pretty much will probably cancel each other. So I would say that the foot size of 30-year women is probably what I would call symmetrical. All right, so we're going to leave that there. All right, now estimating the mean and median from a graph. Now, you just learned that as we skew the data, as it's skewed out or pulled to one side, that that means that the mean goes with it. So what we can do is start trying to figure out, you know, where would the median be in this graph and where would the mean be? Now, I'm going to give you a little hint. We're going to write it over here. Okay, the median is where you cut it in half. If it was a birthday cake, say, all right, so if you have a birthday cake and you cut it in half, and you wanted to cut that thing exactly in two equal parts so you get you know equal halves well that would be where the median is All right. remember the medians were 50 percent of the data lies so that makes sense you want to cut it in half at the 50 percent mark now the mean the mean is a little different the mean is the balancing point well, what does that mean balancing point that means Mr. Kelly's got to learn how to spell alright so the balancing point is if you were gonna balance this where would it balance? This might be a little harder to see. Now think of a teeter-totter. You know how those things when you're, uh, you went to school, kindergarten, and you had to go, you had a kid, let's see, so you got this bored looking thing, teeter-totter, and sometimes they're adjustable because if you have one kid that's older, maybe he's a little heavier, then you move them closer to the middle. So I'm going to put tall, older kid right here. But if you have a tiny kid, all right, we say it has more leverage or has more pull. That's basically what happens here. So if you notice, the balancing point's not right in the middle, so your mean's going to be not right in the middle. But also, it's not going to be where the median is because it gets pulled higher. So knowing that, it's going to... First, what we're going to do, let's just find the median. The median's easy to find. All right, so if you wanted to, you could count all these up, but I'm just going to eyeball it. We're going to look at it. I bet the median... And this is about one. And on your mastery checks and on your homework, if you get close, you'll be okay. What I'm going to look at when I'm grading this is to make sure you understand that the mean is a little bit higher. All right, so your median's got to be close. I'm going to say one. And then if I had to balance this on my finger, I probably would put my finger somewhere like right here. That's about 1.5 or 1.4. So I'm going to guess that the mean is about 1.4 there. Let's look at, by the way, before we move on, is the mean, this is definitely skewed to the right, correct? This data is spread out to the right. Is the mean higher than the median? Yes. So I've done a good job there. How about this data here? This is definitely skewed to the left. It's pulled out more to the left. So where would, if I had to chop this in half, where would I chop it in half to find that median? Like it was birthday cake. Probably like somewhere right, right here. All right, now let's look at our scale. That's 15, that's 20. So I'm looking at maybe 17. So the median here is going to be about 17. Now where would the mean be? Well, it's pulled towards the skewness. So that means instead of 17, maybe 16, 15. I'm going to estimate that the mean on that one is about 15. Ooh, mean, 15. All right, so the median's about 17, mean about 15 in this one. And as I said... Is I'm going to look that your mean is actually lower than your median. That's the whole purpose of this. They have to be close, but they don't have to be exact. So last thing we're going to do, we're going to review stem plots. Now the stem, if you remember a stem plot, sometimes called stem and leaf, is where you have a stem here that represents one number, and then the leaf represents a data value that gets repeated maybe or maybe not. But they always have to give you a key. you got to look at the key to figure out what's going on. So the stem repeats each value and each leaf represents a data point. So here 3-1, 3 slash one, 3 1 here represents 31 years old. All right, this is a stem plot of the ages in a church choir. All right, so before we move on, let's take a look at this. Can you tell me the shape of this? Well, what you have to do is kind of tilt your head this way. 
look, here's here's a kid watching my video. You got to tilt your head this way and look at it. Okay? Look at it this way because here's your number line right here. All right? You got to flip that down and if you look at it that way, it kind of looks symmetric. So I would say this is symmetric, symmetric. As opposed to this other stem and leaf over here, if you notice, it says 6-2 represents 6.2 centimeters. So it's different. Here, uh, the 3 represents a tens place, and over here, it represents the units place. So you have to read that and be careful. Now, if I, you got to tilt your head on this one again. You know, let's just, I kind of like doing it like so you turn your head that way you bring this side down and you notice that it's kind of spread out to the left now be careful some stem plots start with the higher numbers up here in which case it go the other way but as I look at this it's spread out towards the left so this is skewed to the left not that it asks us but I can look at it and figure that out now can I also figure out the the mean can I make a Let's see, what can we do? Can I make a dot plot out of this? Absolutely, because I can write out the values if I wanted to. 30, ooh, actually, 3.0. See what I did? I almost messed up there. 4.5, 6.2, dot, dot, dot. Those are the values in this stem plot. So if I had to write them all out or if I had to find maybe the standard deviation, hint, hint, then I could put it in the calculator uh, by looking at 3.0, 4.5. I have to write it out that way. Okay, lastly... See these numbers right here? These are what we call outliers. An outlier is a number that's really far away from the rest of the data. If you have symmetric data, you rarely have an outlier. But sometimes when it's skewed, you have outliers that are far away from the majority of the data. All right, so what does that do? That really messes up the mean. Okay, as we said, skewed data, you don't want to use the mean anyway. You want to use the median. But those outliers can really mess up the mean. It's like having a billionaire live on your block and they figure out the average income, and it's, oh my God, it's 500,000. No, it's just that billionaire pulling everybody's data up. So that's a better situation to use the median. All right, so let's explain the effect an outlier would have on the following. On the mean, as we said, an outlier will change the mean. It pulls it more towards the value of the outlier. So if the outlier is really high, the mean's going to go higher. If it's lower, the mean's going to drop. Okay, the median, what effect will an outlier have on that? It's going to not change because an outlier, remember the median's in the middle. An outlier, well, it's just the highest value. It's not going to pull up the middle values, so that has no change. And lastly, the standard deviation, if you remember, that measures how much variation is in the data. And to figure it out, remember we had to subtract from the mean? So if you have an outlier, it always increases the standard deviation. So... That's it. 14.2. We're all done with that. Hopefully you can answer the question of who's your data. That's the main point of this. We're looking at distributions. This is Mr. Kelly and Kaiser Slaughter. Remember, it's nice to be important. More important to be nice. See you.